Hey, we're in the new digs. This is a shared universe from downtown Red Bank, not far from uh, one of his other jobs. Yeah, <laughs> I wear many hats. You do, and we're going to get mm. it in all of them. I'm Rob Back and Port. This is the A Game. This is part of the Shared Universe podcast studio, and it's, well, you kind of had a couple of shows in here already, but it's nice to be in the new digs. And technically, this is my boss. This is the man. I'm, I am so not your boss, but... Uh, <laughs> So not. Hello, Rob. Thank you for having me on. I'm Mike Zapsick. It's yes. a pleasure to meet you, meet you all out there. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. <laughs> you may remember this guy from AMC when Comic Book Man was on. You may know him from some other podcasts. If you're following a shared universe, he's got a few things. And he's got a lot of other things that hopefully we'll find out about, you know, as we go along here. First off, thank you. Thanks. Oh, my pleasure. Oh, my God. Yeah. I, you know what? I, you asked me a long time ago. Yeah. And I'm like, absolutely. And, and you never got back to me. That's my fault. That, that, That's I, totally I, my fault. And you were like, yeah, he's just being nice. And it's no. like, no, not really. I was I was sitting there telling my wife. I'm like, <laughs> Rob never called. <laughs> he never called me. You know what? Speaking of your wife, if I can pull up an old photo. Let's sure. give me photo number seven. This is a, a recent photo of the two of you, which I think is a great photo. And there's Buddy Christ in the background from Jay and Silent Bob's uh, Secret Stash. Is it true that comic books kind of brought you together? Yes, it's very true. Comic books did bring us together. My wife is uh, she's a fellow nerd. <laughs> Which is great. It's fantastic. She's uh, she's a Hobbit girl. Oh, wow. She's a very she's into Tolkien. She's uh, sword and sandals kind of. She she digs it. So um, we actually met. Um, she was playing wingman to a girlfriend of hers, who was trying to date this guy, and we were all watch sitting around watching. Um, the uh, Super, uh, not the Super Bowl, was the, the World Series. Okay. And I'm not really a sports guy, and I got dragged along to this thing. Um, and I'm sitting there reading a Wizard magazine and uh, on the couch, and she came up to me. She's like, oh, you're reading Wizard? She's like, oh, I love that magazine. I'm like, sure you do. Sure, you're, you know, because what a great pickup line. Right. And I'm like, of course you do. Uh, and she's like, no, really, I I, I you know, got into comic books with the X-Men, you know, the uh, animated series. Mm -hmm. And she thought that I was just kind of, oh, sure you do, you know, being that that comic book guy. But I'm like, really? You you like comics? That's so unheard of. And I I mean, even um, like guy friends aren't like, oh, you like comics? Mm -hmm. You're a total jag off. What the (laughs) hell? You know, it's. So, you know, and I wasn't really suspicious, but I'm like, oh, that's cool. What do you read? And you know, she's like Sandman and uh, she, she loves Neil Gaiman. And, you know, we just hit it off. And, um, yeah, we had we we met previously, uh, previously uh, before that we met. Uh, but not I, to the not, that, yeah. Not, we didn't, yeah, we didn't have, like, one-on-one conversation. Right. And then we did. And I was like, wow, this, she's kind of special. Yeah. So, and we got one guy. Uh, if I can get photo number six, this is going back a little bit. Oh, but, my God. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> you guys look great together, though. You oh, thanks. really do. That was um, that was our first New Year's together. Oh, so, wow. yeah, that was a New Year's Eve party. And that was, wow, that's going back. And that's funny you mentioned that because this Saturday that's is. That's right. Your anniversary is It's my anniversary. It's, uh, yeah, uh, 22 years. Fantastic. Yeah, I feel really old. I, I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at the video and I'm seeing my gray hair and I'm like, oh my God, you know, there's a reason I dyed it for Comic Book Man. <laughs> Do you look back on that and say, oh, maybe I shouldn't have dyed it? Or- no, I, I really should not have. Uh, yeah. I should have gone gray mm-hmm. and just, just been because uh, other people were dyeing their hair. And <laughs> uh, I was like, all right, you know, maybe I'll go for the youthful audience. And then one time it just came out so jet black. I was like, that's awful. It was oh. it was god awful. And they're like, I- idiot. And I'm like, all right. <laughs> So they had, from what I understand, uh, the guys in the editing bays uh, at uh, AMC had uh, Elvis mic file and regular mic file. And after that, I was like, once I heard that, I'm like, well, um, are you a cursing podcast, by the way? Yeah, you're go. Oh, then f- I was like, fuck them. <laughs> and I went total gray. Thank you. <laughs> and I was just, then they, the uh, the showrunner, Brian Nichelle, came to me. He's like, Zap, you you uh, you let it go gray completely, mm-hmm. you know, instead of the just for men on the sides. Size, I'm like, right. I'm like, fuck it. I, you know what? I earned this gray. So yeah. Amen. And he's like, bold choice. He's like, I didn't even have to run it up the flagpole. The <laughs> people at AMC were like, 
we love it. Go. <laughs> Did they give you any kind of flack? Because, I mean, there was always this thing where it's like, how real was Comic Book Man? And I saw a quote from you from uh, years back, and I would like to elaborate on this. There are some things that are planned for the show, sure, but everything that we said in every episode, 100% us. Absolutely. And you can uh, you can ask my, um, my business partner, Ming Chen, yeah. that everything that we said was absolutely 100% us. Yeah. Uh, there, uh, in, during season two, they tried... To get Brian remember, Johnson to say stuff. I was about to say, I was reading up on something. Yeah, like they were yeah. trying to get Brian Johnson to say stuff, and he's like, go fuck yourselves. He's like, no, <laughs> I'm not saying that. He's like, I would never say that. I would never, I wouldn't say that even, you know, high on pills and, and drunk on whatever. Right. I wouldn't say that. That's not me. And they're like, well, come on, say it. Because there was, there was one guy who was like, good old boy, come on, say it. Oh, and he's like, he's like, no, fuck you. He's like, the paycheck ain't worth it. And right. So, when you look back and you have moments like that, you're going, "Yeah, we'll be gone after season two. That's it. We're done." We thought that that was going to be it because <laughs> it was like, "Oh," but it turns out that season two was then. And again, go to some of my compatriots out there in uh, you know the comic book men world, and truly, we did some of our best work in season two. No, it's it's really funny. And actually, some of the best ratings you had was season two as well. Yes, season we two, did. Season three was like, that was the arc that really was between two and four is where you got your highest audience. Yeah, and when we, we started to hit our stride. Actually, we hit we were like hitting on all cylinders during season seven, mm-hmm. and then they pulled the plug. I was <laughs> like, you know, we finally got this down, and, right. and, you know, yeah, it ain't that always the way. And the funny thing is, and I don't know if it works for reality shows like it does with um, – comedies or dramas that they say you get to the 100th episode then the syndication money comes and i don't know if it works that way for reality <laughs> no TV. we're we're no no it's it's <laughs> so it it's really, all not only that but it's also cable money so yeah. it's like, you know it's, it's not like i'm i'm going to nbc and no. saying hey boys paycheck time and <laughs> right. nope now they're they were very like yeah 96 is good enough for you scumbags yeah. i'm like all right, wow all right Thanks so much. And that was also the year that Kevin had his heart attack. That's true. And he did the upfronts for AMC. Mm-hmm. And he's like, yeah, we're a shoe in He's like, boys, don't worry. We got this. It's locked. Right. And then he made the call. He's like, I was wrong. It's not locked. It's, <laughs> and they, they made the call, and they're like, you're you're done. And yeah, That's the thing that throws me, because it's like it was on most times midnight and on a Sunday, and it was getting an audience. And it, you would think if you're putting a show on that late, and knowing that the cost factor of the show wasn't a lot, it seemed to make most sense that you would keep something like that. I I would think that that's, but I don't wear a suit. Right. As you can it, as it, you can tell, it, I don't wear a suit. Neither do I. So I'm not one of those bean counters. And we also threw off their skew because we had people who would um, that they DVR us, right? And they'd watch us later. And I, I know people have come up to me and they're. They never, they never knew what to do with us. Right. That's the whole thing. I, I think that that was one of the the biggest sticking points. We weren't a comedy. We weren't a reality show per se. Per se. We weren't. We we were so. Um. We were unnameable. Y- yeah. You were basically bringing a podcast to a television um, outlet like AMC and kind of recording your life in the store however it was going to play out. Yes, and a lot of the stuff, um, like I said, they, they would set up the scenes for us. Right. It's like, all right, we need to get to, here's here's your point A. Okay, the bl- here's the blueprint of what's yeah. going to happen today. Actually, okay. it, it was not even a blueprint. Here's... <laughs> it was it was like uh, one of those really shitty um, Ocean's Eleven. Like we're gonna start here and <laughs> gonna end up here. We got twelve guys over there. Right. It was we're gonna start here. We need you to end up somewhere over there. And somebody will have to make the backflip off the yeah, safe. Exactly. To tri- yeah, yeah, there you go. that's yeah. It was yeah doing the triple Indy. Right. So that was that was <laughs> us. They're like we're we're starting at point A. Mm-hmm. Get to to point D somehow. Mm-hmm. That's where we want to go. That we want to end up there. And nine times out of ten, we'd hit the mark. Right. But that tenth time, it'd go so completely off that we had two episodes that we just couldn't air. <laughs> that there, there are two episodes out there, and uh, you can uh, again check with Ming. Ming's, Ming's our um, comic book man historian. Right. They exist somewhere. I just don't know where. <laughs> One of them was Doctor Sketchy. 
Dr. Sketchy. Yes. Mm. And, uh, I mean, yeah, you start out with a title like that's Dr. Sketchy. Sketchy. Yeah, that <laughs> sounds like a dude who's going to roofie your drink, and <laughs> you're going to end up with uh, lady parts attached to you there somehow. You go. <laughs> so, um, yeah, or, or in compromising positions, something. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was. You're the... naked on the floor with your keys <laughs> in your butt. There you go. Mm. So, um, no, they gave us pads, and they would bring in uh, burlesque dancers. Uh, burlesque dancers, burlesque women. Women. Not okay. they didn't dance, okay. uh, but they were they would pose for us, and we'd have to sketch them. Okay. And when you're filming that, you have to do multiple takes because you have to get a picture of Ming sketching, you have to get a picture of Brian sketching, sketching. picture of me sketching. You know, you got to get those things right. You know, uh, and then and, try to edit it and try to make it look like you know, yeah. okay, something's happening here. Exactly, and it was not. A barn burner. It was not uh, something that people would have been like, damn, I'm riveted. Because mm-hmm. it, it was just, it was poorly, it was a poor uh, concept first off. It, it wouldn't even make a good Saturday Night Live sketch. Ooh. Even in like, you know, what, season 23? Yeah, whatever the, Whatever it is, uh, yeah. Um, but the, they tried it. It didn't work, and we never aired it. And then there was supposed to be like... Um, we also did one with uh, comic book women. Mm-hmm. It was like the comic book men meet the comic book women. And we went to a, a shop that was run primarily by women. women. Right. And um, they, they really had an attitude against us. And, I mean, during season one, we had, we had battled that. You know, all these people were, were coming down on us like, comic book men, oh, you guys are sexist. And, and it was just like, oh, please stop. No. For God's sakes. I mean, Kevin Smith, you know, the guy who whose show this is the brainchild of right, is exactly. one of the biggest advocates for women that I've ever met. Very true. And Very true. Uh, we were we were catching shit from people online. And, you know, Twitter was a constant battle. You know, you go on just to see, you know, something amusing mm-hmm. and you'd get bombarded with you guys are scumbags. I'm like. All right, well, that's fine. But that was season one. And once they saw the show, they're like, oh, okay. Yeah. You know, we get it. Mm-hmm. And we brought women in. And there were women who came and, you know, we had couples. We, had, yeah. I mean, it was, we were all inclusive, yeah. you know. But it just so happened that there wasn't a woman who worked at the shop. Right. So, okay. That's, you know, mea culpa. Yeah, we, we didn't. But, right. you know, that. Things change, mm-hmm. so you know that's it's what happens. And I think in a weird way, you guys didn't get a break in a sense because it's like like you said, they didn't know what to do with the show because you guys aren't actors. Let's get no. that straight. You guys are not actors, so in a sense, you're being asked to improv and be yeah. like comedy, and it may not come naturally to you. But the fact that you're hitting the mark nine times out of ten is is incredibly impressive when you're not this trained thespian kind of saying, oh, I know what I'm going to do here. I know how to do this. Right. And especially when you've got somebody like Brian Johnson who's like peppering you with insults every five minutes <laughs> and destroying your self-esteem. It's right. like, oh, man. And, you know, um, Ming, I mean, for God's sakes, the man's got the, the skin of a walrus. Right. It's it's incredible. Um, he should have been in Tusk. Um <laughs> Ming Chen, Ming Tusk. Chen Tusk, Mr. Tusk, Mr. Tusk. Um, <laughs> but I, I mean, just the the shit that Ming had to put up with. I, I mean, I only took like ten percent of that, and I was like, <laughs> I <can't>, I know. <laughs> you know, and it's like, oh my god. You know, there were times when I would leave, and I'd I'd feel really bad about myself. Oh, man. And then I, I thought about it, and I'm like, oh wait, it's coming from Brian Johnson, and you know, <laughs> right. that's. I mean, look at what God did to him. So. <laughs> um, <laughs> Well played. Sir. Yeah. Well played. I mean, for, for Christ's sake. <laughs> Do you think you could have done another season or two if they had given the opportunity? Because it sounds like, in a weird way, it kind of ended the way, like, oh, you know, we we did everything we could do at this point. No, yeah. actually, we had stories to tell. Oh, we did. Wow. We had some stuff. We had some stuff in the hopper that we were going to try to get done, like um, uh, a softball team. Oh, that would have been good. Yeah, that, that would have been know, real good. And we were going to have Stan Lee. Um, be our, our head our, coach, our coach. Yeah, yeah. that would have been, been yeah, ninety six year old guy. <laughs> no, <laughs> man, you run like this, and yeah, that would have worked. Uh, it would have sucked if Stan like broke a hip or something. We yeah, would have been like that. Would have been bad. We would have been the guys who killed Stan Lee. <laughs> so it's like Stan wouldn't want it any other way. He wanted to go out that way. No, well, uh, <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, he told me. I swear to God, <laughs> he said it. <laughs> 
people like you, boo, no. boo. I'm like, thank God, you know. And uh, we had we were gonna do like a day camp for kids, right? With a comic book day camp. Um, I think Ming was going to pitch. Well, let's do a comic book day camp because the birthday party worked out so well. <laughs> and we're gonna get like, uh, hopefully, you know, we were gonna try to get. Um, I would have loved to have had him on uh, Neil Gaiman to be like our our, oh, there you go. our camp counselor. <laughs> just be like, now what am I doing here? The proper Brit, you know, just exactly. This makes absolutely no, no sense, sense to me. No sense whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah. What is going on? Yeah, Downton Downton <laughs> Abbey. Abbey. There we go. Downton yes. Abbey meets comic book man. Yeah, that would have been splendid. I, but I would have loved to have just been sitting there listening to Neil talk. <laughs> oh, for sure. Oh my God, oh, what a voice! Have you ever listened to any of his audiobooks? Uh, I haven't. Oh, I haven't. God. Real, that, you should. He is amazing. I'll have to do that. He is. Ah. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit more comic book when we get the random shots, but Mike, there's so much more to talk about. Oh, sure. With you. Um, in the comic book world, and this is something I've noticed, um, there was an article I read from Antique Trader that was talking about because of the pandemic, the nostalgia, and investment opportunities that comic books have exploded more than ever before. Yes. Do you see that? Do you see oh, the trend? Oh, my God. Yes, I have. Uh, we recently moved the secret stash it's right. uh, we're coming up on our one year anniversary in our new location and um when um when the pandemic hit everybody shut down for three months everybody right. was like we can't do anything mm -hmm. and we were non-essential uh, i mean comic book shops non-essential mm -hmm. boo sir <laughs> boo. boo phil murphy <laughs> boo um but they they shut us down so um i i had an idea and I said, let's do uh, curated boxes. Okay. Why don't we curate some comic book boxes? And, uh, you know, let's see what Ming would choose. And let's see what Walt would choose and what Brian and, yeah. and I would choose. And, you know, you got a you know, one in four chance of getting a, a box by, sure. you know, either Ming mm. or, you Or, know, yeah, right, yeah, right, 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 right. Yeah. So uh, if you you were hoping for it. Um, and I tried to accommodate people. You know, like, oh, yeah, I'll, I can get you one from Ming, no problem. Mm-hmm. So uh, we did that, and um, it was went gangbusters. I was like, wow, this is fantastic. And uh, when we reopened, Kevin thought about closing the shop. He's like, should we? Really? Yeah, should we should close the shop? Should we? And he said this uh, many a time. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's in his book, uh, Kevin Smith's Secret Stash. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Walt talked him out of it. Walt said, you know, this place is a landmark. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we still have legs. And, you know, why not? Right. And so we stayed open, but we decided that we needed to move. We needed, like, a fresh start. Mm -hmm. So we moved up the street. Um, <laughs> and, you know, you're going to move. Why not move 10 doors down? Why, why not? not? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Don't do the three doors down. Bit. Do 10 doors yeah, down. Yeah, I know. It would have been easier for us to move, like, 200 miles than it would have <laughs> for the, the 10 doors Gosh. down. Because, I mean, that was a process. But right. um, we we got in. Uh, Ernie O'Donnell, you know, did a makeover on the place. It looks yes. gorgeous. Uh, and we came in, and right out of the gate, we were, people came back. They're like, yes, mm -hmm. I want to buy, I want to buy comic books. Um, during the pandemic, I, I heard this story so many times. During the pandemic, I watched everything I wanted to watch on Netflix. I went to the edge of the internet. I looked over. And I decided to go back. So go. Uh, they did everything they could with, you know, um, you know, online media. Yeah. And so they're like, well, I'll clean out my closet. So they go to their closet and they've got an old box of comics. And they spent the day cataloging them, going through them and reading them. Mm -hmm. And the joy that they got mm -hmm. from reading books from like 30, 40 years ago, 20 years ago, right. brought them back. Mm -hmm. And they're like, you know what? I want that feeling again. So I've a whole new wave of not just uh, people who are looking for investments, right. which there are people out there, and God love them too. Yeah, I mean, I saw something uh, like earlier last year that one comic went for well, like three and a quarter million dollars. Yeah, that would probably be the Action Comics. Yeah, number it was one. the Action yeah. Comics. I think it was Volume One. Yeah. 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 So yeah, that. Of course, you know, Action Comics number one. Yeah, exactly. And Steve Jeppy, di uh, di uh, diversed, diverse, diversified? No, uh, he divested himself. Divested, yes. I'm sorry, he divested himself. He divested. Of um, most of his, he had a, a museum of pop culture mm -hmm. down in uh, Baltimore, and he gave 
ninety percent of it to the Library of Congress. Oh wow! Donated. I did not know that. Yes, yeah. and uh, Action Comics number one was in there, and I saw him chucking one around like yeah. like it was a pizza. Oh, whoa, I was whoa, like, whoa, whoa, yeah, whoa. pizza dough. Hey, hey I'm hey, like, oh whoa. my god. <laughs> He's like, no, it's mine. I can do whatever the hell I want with it. He lit, lit a cigar with it. It was great. Oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> See, I remember something vividly from when I was young. My brother had this number one edition of the, I think it was Wolverine comic. Yes. Which, which no, back then, you don't know. And then you look up what the value is, and I'm like, I'm trying to find it. And I'm like, oh, God, what did we do? You yeah, I know. Not uh, knowing, of course. Well, two years ago, you could have had that in mint condition for... Seventy-five dollars. Right. Right now, it's going for like three fifty. Yeah. Three hundred fifty bucks for a fifty-cent investment. That's pretty exactly. nice. Exactly. It's ah. it's crazy. Yeah. I mean, and you've been a collector for decades. My entire life. Yeah. Um, I'm less of a collector and more of an accumulator. Okay. Because I like to read my books. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm not a CGC guy mm -hmm. or a CBCS. Mm -hmm. uh, I. I don't need to have it in the plastic. I don't need it slabbed. Okay. I like to look at it. I like to smell it. And especially stuff from, like, my childhood. The yeah. action comics that introduced the Supermobile, the most ridiculous vehicle out there. I love that thing. It is the stupidest looking thing. <laughs> It looks it it honest to God, it looks like a butt plug. I swear to you, it's a super butt plug. Uh, but if you look at it, you're like, holy cow! And there are little th nods in there, and you go back and you reread stuff. Yeah, they threw some some really really creepy shit in there because <laughs> Superman had to swallow his super suit because he was Lois Lane was on his trail, and you know he swallowed the super suit, and he's like, well, you know. Thank goodness I compressed it so tightly that it'll just pass through. <laughs> and he's like, and I'm sure it'll come out fine. And yeah, he gives a sure. gives the old wink. <laughs> and you're like, ew. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> First off, Kryptonian uh, stomach acid, I'm sure, is horrible. Right. And Kryptonian poop? I don't even want to no, know. No, there's certain things we don't need no, to know. No, don't need to know. <laughs> but with that old wink. Uh -huh. It's like, all right, Superman, <laughs> I hope it comes out. I, and, you know, if you're a kid, you're reading it, you're like, he ate that. <laughs> He's going to poop it out. <laughs> and then you realize, like, later on, you're rereading. You're like, what the hell was I thinking as, like, a 10-year-old reading this going, I hope it all, uh, I'm sure it'll all come out fine in the end. You're like, right. why would you wear that? <laughs> The, the questions that occur now, I didn't think of back of then. Of course not. So, you know? Why do I feel like I'm on an episode of Point Blank? Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> very true. Yeah. yeah I mean, I, he, Mike does three different kinds of podcasts, and Point Blank happens to be one of them. As a matter of fact, uh, can I possibly see Jay get, I, now i got to look and see which photo it is. I think it's number nine. Give me that one. There we go. There. We oh go. my boys. There's John Ross and there's Ming Chen. There's a couple of the crew, and you guys do that. You usually try to get once a week on there. We do. Um, we've been missing it for um, family reasons. Yeah. Uh, a couple of our guys have gotten right. COVID, and you know, unfortunate. unfortunate but yeah. yeah. But I mean, it, that's the thing. I mean, you've got three different ones. I mean, I look at Point Blank. There's a lot of pop culture and a lot mm -hmm. of stuff going. On. And John, John's the type of guy that it kind of spurs the pop culture part of it. It seems to me. Yes, John's yeah. huge into his knowledge of the Legion of Superheroes. Yeah, is I mean, very, very close to my own. I'm like, whoa, that's he's impressive. Wow. So. And that seems like it's always fun. When I watch it, it always seems like, okay, these guys are just shooting the shit and having a great time. That which is, is it. Which I think is the key to a podcast, it seems. That's pretty much it. Yeah. It's it's just a conversation yeah. between two people. Right. Or th three yeah. or four. Or two, on the point blank, 27. Right. Yeah. <laughs> depending on who the hell we're having in that week. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Just make sure you bring enough beer for them all. Yeah, that, that's important. Don't, yes. worry, don't worry, I got that for random shots. Good for you. Yeah, well, I got your cup there, so just in case you're interested. But <laughs> I, I sell comics is another one you do. And kind of what we were talking about, obviously, right. the comic book world. That's been going on for how many years now? Oh, my God. Uh, we started in 2012. Yeah. 2011. Okay, so you walk so past the 10-year mark. That's we're 11 crazy. years. And uh, we shut down when we um, when we opened up. A shared universe. I kind of fell by the wayside. We were yeah. at uh, 300, mm -hmm. episode 300. Yeah. And um, it turns out that 
episode 300 was a really weird one because Brian Johnson, uh, we were going for like a what if. Yeah. What if um, Brian Walt and um, Brian Quinn from Practical Jokers mm -hmm. had started I Sell Comics. And it was... They we asked them to just do a couple of things for us, right? You know, just like a couple of inserts. They did an entire podcast. Oh wow! And they they gave it to Ming and uh, Brian was like, "When are you guys going to release it?" And when Brian says something like that, I become Brian Johnson, <laughs> and in the way like, "Oh, you want me to release it? Do you? Mm. Oh, okay. Well, maybe I'll wait a week. Maybe I'll wait another. Maybe and." That went on for like three months, um, actually closer to six months. Now, yeah, because he just kept that. He kept uh, going on Twitter, being like, "Let make them release the 300." I'm like, "How would you respond to this?" I said, "You tell people to go fuck themselves." So I'm gonna tell you all to go fuck, fuck yourselves. yourselves. Yeah. So that's pretty much how that came up. And uh, we did like a it was 300 and then a 300.5, which was us like commenting on everything that they were saying so it was it was actually it was a lot of fun when you look at where podcasting was when you first started to where it is now this is becoming a little bit more mainstream but it's still not quite there but no it, it uh, and i i don't know how radio survives because who the hell listens to radio now this is where i can chime in a little bit as somebody who spent 25 plus years in that okay. industry it it is suffering in my opinion, I mean, where I'm seeing just nationally where numbers and listeners mm -hmm. are down and podcasts are creeping up and you're seeing the Sirius XM factor where you're getting more subscriptions to that service. So it, it becomes this, if radio doesn't do something in the next five years, it could be in a lot of trouble, but it's in trouble now. The pandemic definitely hurt. Gotcha. Of no, course. No doubt. There was no drive time. I mean, that's that's part of it. And also, <laughs> Sirius, it, they've taken like the Dunkin' Donuts model where it's like, 50 cents for a donut and like 25 cents for three dozen. And the thing was, that's not what I thought Sirius XM was at first. At first, it was about being, here's this large library of music. You're going to hear shit that you haven't heard in so long, but you're going to get that, oh, I'm glad I heard that with a song. Okay, I know that one and mix it up early. Mm -hmm. Now they cut down the libraries and I'm going, why? Why are you doing that? You're offering something different. Stay different. But I think that they're going back to the model of radio yeah well the, the model of radio at times depending on the format it's always been as i call it lowest common denominator that the attention span of the average person unfortunately is about this much yeah so that's why suddenly if you hear oh i heard that song like 90 minutes ago well there's a reason for it yeah it's because they want to get the same person to be sure. like oh that's great i you know let me and it's it's the subliminal thing where it's like hey i i better put that on my apple you know and i'm sure that sirius is right in cahoots with Apple or mm. Spotify or would, somebody. Would be. We don't yes. know for sure. Never do. But but there's the interesting thing where podcasting is increasing. It is getting more popular, but it hasn't, as I'll say, with the exception of a couple of elite ones, it, mm. it, it hasn't gotten to the point where it's gotten over the, as I'll say, over the hump. It's like it's right. creeping up the hill. It's almost there, but it can't seem to get to the other side. It hasn't broken through that glass ceiling. Thank you. Yes. There you go. That's well, well said. Um, that's there's. Uh, I I don't know what the the magic. Everyone's looking for a silver bullet. And yeah, exactly. You, you know, you want exactly, that magic yeah. bullet to right, to right. blow everything, you know, off the top. But uh, I think that you know it's it'll it'll get there. Mm -hmm. But, well, that's the reason you guys have stayed in a shared universe as long as you have. I mean, you're in for the long haul, you and me. Yeah. Without I mean, question. yeah. This is it's something that we do, and uh, thank God Ming's Ming's the guy who comes here, and he's he's the public face. Oh, no doubt, no M doubt. Me, I'm I'm the guy who's behind the scenes, and I'll I'll pop up on a podcast every once in a while, which I appreciate. Not a problem. Absolutely, and and it's good to get your take on it too. I mean, you know, this is. Something where I, I, I get it, and and with Ming, he is the PR guy. He is somebody who's not does is not afraid to be out there and do what he does. Right, you know, he's the kind of who's like going. If there's four comic cons in a month, he's doing at least two or three. You know, you, uh, no, he's trying to do six. He's trying to do yeah. six. <laughs> that, and that's it. You don't do a lot of the cons. That I know, probably a personal choice, but um, it's it's a personal and professional choice. It's not even a personal choice. It's okay. more professional because uh, I was always tethered to the stash, okay. and I still am. Right, uh, right, even right, right. I, I've taken you know even bigger role now, but um, 
you know, having to be there and just make sure that, you know, boots on the ground mm -hmm. uh, doesn't free me up a lot of weekends. Right. So, but that's, that's going to change. That, right. that will change. I, I will get myself out there more. I would like to see. I mean, uh, if I could get um, uh, photo number four, I think, and there, you know, then that was one of the ones. It, it, I mean, like an LA Comic Con, obviously, that's one of the bigger ones. I mean, San Diego, I know, is huge as well. Um, when you look at your journey on the con circuit, is one stand out other than some others? LA Comic Con is a that was a great con. Mm -hmm. um, there are a couple that stand out. One not for the right reasons. Um, oh, here we go. <laughs> oh, this is this is one of my favorite stories. Ming and I and we Ming and I and Brian were doing a con down in New Orleans. Okay. Uh, it was in December. I think New Orleans. Ming, November. I, I, Ming, I know you're in here. Um, didn't New Orleans just do one like in the past week? Wasn't Last there one? Weekend. Last weekend. Okay. Yeah. Right. I was just thinking about that when you said New Orleans. I'm sure that theirs was better attended than ours was. Oh boy. <laughs> so we were there and. Um, Con promoters were, yeah, it's going to be great. And, you know, we're, we're hoping for a huge turnout. And oh, there's yeah. a word you don't want to hear. And it turns out that uh, the Saints were out of town that weekend. Oh, which is the biggest part of their economy. Yes. Without question. And uh, they were out of town, so a lot of people had nothing to do, but they still stayed away from that con uh, in droves. And Brian ended up uh, ghosting us on that con. And that the promoters felt was a breach of our contract. Oh. So Ming and I didn't get paid. Ouch. And there were, the con was attended all weekend by 83 people, and that includes the vendors. Ouch. That's a disaster. And the guests. That was a disaster. It was god-awful. I think we made like 15 bucks. And uh, we spent a lot more than that out on Bourbon Street. That's for damn sure. Does that happen more frequently, or is it now? Because I know, no. that, yeah. I mean, obviously, we'll take the pandemic out of the equation for a second because it is rebuilding the, the concert. But it seemed like it was starting to hit its stride right before the like the last three or four years for sure. It was really you talk about breaking the glass ceiling. Yeah, it was, I think it just done that. In that three or four year stretch. Yeah, there are people who are doing cons, who are, who are putting on cons who had never put on cons before. Right. And being fairly successful at it. Right. And, you know, you could have a con in a place like Red Bank. Mm -hmm. And you could bring, you know, 15, 20,000 people in. Oh, look, if you brought the View Askew universe here. Yeah, I know. I'm yeah, probably reaching in a choir. But, yeah, it would be huge. No doubt. Oh, yeah. And, uh, but you, you could do that pretty much anywhere mm -hmm. except for some of the flyover states. But right. even those have their core people because, I mean, nerds, comic book geeks, mm -hmm. we're all uh, at heart loyalists, yeah. and we will go to a con, especially like, like a startup con. Mm -hmm. You know, most of us all put down a hard-earned money to go and see if they, you know, We've all got a list. We've all got our, you know, holy grails that we're looking for. Right. So maybe you'll get it at that con, and that'd be cool. <laughs> get to meet Jerry Mathers and, uh, you know, look, Tony Dowd. Look, I, Pete, <laughs> I laugh, but the thing is, there's a market for it. People want the experience. They're paying for an experience. Yes, they but, are. Yeah, whether whether it's as small as Jerry, you know, going back to Leave It to Beaver or going to, uh, who am I thinking of, Spin City. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The mayor and I. Why am I blanking? I know Barry Boswick. Barry Boswick, Rocky Horror Picture Show. I know he's done a couple of these. He always oh, yeah. very nice guy. That's I've what gotten I've, heard. To, yes. I've I've gotten to spend time with him. What what a lovely man. Right. You know, uh, and I've met some, you know, some uh, celebrities who are on the decline. Yeah. Like me and Ming. <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, and then Gosh. I found some other. You know, we've we've hung out. We had uh, dinner with uh, Jason Isaacs. You know, yeah. Lucius Malfoy himself, mm -hmm. breaking bread with the guy. There you go. What? A, and pretty awesome. Just sitting there and he's he's shooting the shit with us. and Just and, having a good time yeah. being loose, yeah. Hanging out with Baby Boba, uh, Daniel Logan, you know, his stars. He, he's got to be getting paid by Lucasfilms for just that one thing, they, looking out the every time on Book of Boba Fett. There you go. And he's like, cha-ching! Yeah, another check. Yeah, Where that's it. Put it in the direct deposit right here. Thanks so much. <laughs> Appreciate it, Mickey. 
<laughs> having fun with Mike Zapsic here on the A game. Okay, it's time for the random shots portion of this. I have basically been stalking Mike's social media as much as possible. Coming up with some oh, good questions. deal. Well, you know, I got to got to do something here. Uh, I got to uh, thank my friend Mike Morano. This is Redemption Bourbon. He just got this for me for the holidays. I will offer anybody if you want, but I got to at least do this and say, Mike, thank you so much for coming on. I, I not a problem. That. Thank you. Cheers. Anybody? Anybody? Anybody you want? Just step up, take some. Woo, okay, so part of the random shots, I am going back to Comic Book Ben. I am going to give you <laughs> one. You can pick one or the other. Okay. Um, first one. Playing Go Fish with Billy D. Williams or bowling with the cast of Clerks? Uh, go Fish. Go Fish, yeah. And not often you get a chance to sit there and have a high-stakes Go Fish match. With exactly. Billy D. I can I can go bowling with Brian O'Halloran <laughs> anytime. He's on my speed dial. Yeah, he's on mine, too, <laughs> come to think of it. Matter of fact, if this is a poker game, we're there. We're there. And we're there. Yeah. Hey, side note, um, who is the best poker player within USQ? Because I've played, I played some matches with you. I've played with Brian. I've played with Kevin. I've played with Muse. Um, Let's see. Uh, Mike Bellicos is a really good player. I Belly. Have, yeah. Uh, Ernie O'Donnell is very good. Very aggressive. Ernie's aggressive. Er, Ernie will will shit talk you until you freak out. And um, that that's his strategy. That's true. And I'm trying to think who else. Brian O'Halloran is very very good as well. He's strategic. He's and, sneaky. Yeah. Yes. And his. Uh, his lovely compatriot, uh, Diana Devlin, mm -hmm. she is also She doesn't play a lot. Fierce. Of games, no, when she, she does, oh, yeah. yeah, the claws come out. Agreed um, on that. And the, the late Rob Bruce, he was a very good poker player as well. You could I, get into your head. I was going to bring up Rob at the end, but since you mentioned him, um, obviously the, his passing mm -hmm. was a, obviously a shock to everybody within the community. Yeah. And didn't see that. I mean, what did Rob bring to your world? Uh, to you mean to comic book? Yeah, men? to comic book. Yeah, Rob brought um, a peerless knowledge of kaiju, um, the ephemera, everything having to do with uh, Godzilla, Japanese monsters. Mm -hmm. I've never met anyone who had that much that level of knowledge. knowledge. He was uh, good with comic books. Mm -hmm. Um. He was good with toys. He was very good at finding stuff. And that's that's what he did um, best was, like, you needed something, yeah. he could find it. And we wish all the best to the Bruce family. We do. It was a very, very difficult time. Uh, random shots continuing. All right. Gene Simmons or Adam West? Adam West. <laughs> I was hoping you were going to say Adam West. I mean, it's like, when I, Gene, I've interviewed Gene, and he just comes across arrogant i'm sorry he just does and i That's, wasn't sure was that the vibe you were getting when you were there you know? no because i knew he was arrogant okay, so, so right. there you go there you go all right <laughs> he's like i'm arrogant because i'm the best it's like no arrogant comes from a place of fear you're afraid of not being the best so there you go gene and adam just seemed he seems like he was the genuine article just at, very you know we had met adam at uh ming and i went to our first con it was this it was the super mega show mm -hmm. up in uh Pic it was in uh, Parsippany. Okay. And <laughs> it was, oh my, it, they had a, an all star cast there. Uh, Adam was there. Mm -hmm. um, Lee Merriweather. Ooh, I remember. Her. Yes. Catwoman. Catwoman. Yep. Catwoman from the movie. And she did Barnaby Jones. And Barnaby Jones. Beautiful woman. And she was Miss America. Yes, she was. Uh, gorgeous lady. Even in her 80s, she was dropped stunning and and just so very sweet mm -hmm. and uh we were between her and kelly who okay. lady deathstrike mm -hmm. and the voice on uh phineas and ferb I she does that. I she really does know. voice work as nice. well uh, and she was also white rabbit in um arrow if I'm not mistaken. I'm like, it's not often I get stumped on this stuff, and I'm like going, I'm not in their league. <laughs> uh, Vincent Pastorelli was there, and uh, who else was there? It was uh, Deep Roy. Deep Roy was there. <laughs> and the saddest thing, um, Larry Storch was there. Oh, God. And Larry just recently decided to kind of drop out the yes. public uh, recently. I mean, he's, what, 98 or 99? He's 98 or 99, God but he was 90. Yeah. Like 95 back then or 94, I forget how old he was, but mm -hmm. I went up to him. I'm like, I I absolutely loved you on F Troop, and he like looked at me and just was nodding. And his caretaker came over and was like, Oh yeah, he's not taking questions now. I'm like, Okay, good enough, whatever. 
That is the one interview I was trying to get when I started this podcast because a buddy of mine, uh, Bob Ardre, who sings in a band, uh, part of the band, the Whirling Dervishes, mm-hmm. is a huge Larry Storch fan. Oh. And it's always been that the missing, like, he wanted to try to get that interview, and I was like, I was trying to get it for him. I was like, going, yeah, Larry's not. But to hear that, it just seems like he just didn't talk a lot. So it was kind of tough for him to. Yeah. Yeah. That kind of sad, but I also can understand getting him out there. That has to be a double-edged sword. It is. You know, you're seeing this guy, and he's probably warm and genuine, but he can't really talk. No. Same thing happened with Soupy Sales. And you want to talk about, you you were talking about, there's got to be a market out there. Chiller Theater is that market. Market. Yes. (laughs) It's for everything from your childhood. Everything that you remember from WPIX. Channel 11 New York, absolutely. Or WWOR. Actually, no. They were only WOR because they couldn't afford that extra W. W until later on. Yeah. (laughs) Until they got that UPN (laughs) money. Yeah. They're happy about that. Yeah. (laughs) Lou Ferrigno or Robert England? Robert England. Yeah, you could have said. Hesitate. You yeah. could have said Lou Ferrigno and the guy who sweeped the. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, I'm Lou is not my favorite person. Okay. So yeah, and you know I'm sure he's warm and fuzzy to his family, but not your thing. Um, okay. He's not my family. I so. gotta respect that. I think I know the answer to this, but I'm gonna pose it: the Batmobile or Kit. Oh, Batmobile, of course, yeah. but that's a, that's a tougher one than you think. Good, I was hoping you were going to say Cause that. Because Kit was Kit was badass. Yeah, that was I mean, that was a Trans Am, yeah, of course. Exactly. My Jersey boy, for God's sakes, <laughs> who didn't want to who didn't want a Trans Am cruising up and down uh, Seaside Heights? You you not only had the Batmobile, didn't you have the Batboat at one point? We did come up during Comic Book Man. I remember that. Yeah. We had all the Bat vehicles. Yeah, which was very cool. And we, then a oh God, a Butch Patrick. Yes. From the Monsters. You had the Monsters Mobile. We did not have you the Monsters. Mo- no. Ooh. No. That was that was one of the ones we wanted to get. We also wanted to get the Partridge family bus. <laughs> I, I would have loved to have done that. Well, I am sending uh, a message out then to Tommy Janner, who's been on this podcast, who is a lawyer who represents Butch Patrick. I'm like going, uh, I need to have Butch on and we need to rectify the uh whole Monsters Mobile down at a secret stash. Yeah. I want to see if that thing drives like the Batmobile, because the Batmobile, I mean, mm-hmm. it's cool, mm-hmm. but driving it's like driving a parade float. Ooh. It's like, yeah, and handled like a brick. I have seen videos of Butch kind of driving around Asbury Park with this thing. It looks like it's still got some get-ups. So, right. I mean, it could be something. <laughs> He's cruising down there. Hey, what's up, ladies? Hey, hey. Ever had a wolf man lick? Yeah. No. Oh. <laughs> yeah, well, he's done a dating show, so hey. You know. Okay, this is where I drag Ming into this. You can pay attention because uh, uh, Mike's got to pick one. Ming's rapping with Mr. DMC, Daryl. Yes. Or Brian Johnson's Two Kisses with Ahura. Oh, Ming's rapping. Ming won really? that. Really? I would have thought you would have gone no, for me, no? No, and besides, uh, I am I was jealous of Brian. <laughs> Only you. time in my life I've ever been jealous of Brian Johnson. Right, I can tell you he that. got two kisses yeah, from, from... Yeah, Nichelle Nichols. Uh, yes. Oh my God. She's a legend. Yes. And she's such a sweet she woman. She looked fantastic, by the way. She did. Them. And she still does. I she mean, does. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, it's like... It was like every ch- anybody who watched Star Trek. It's like that was the childhood fantasy. Of course, it was. It was. It was her and Batgirl. You wanted to get kissed by Batgirl. Batgirl. Yeah. yeah perfect. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> no doubt about it. Yeah, and, and by the way, Ming, props to you because it's like that was not easy to be put on the spot and be like, "Oh, I got my cheat sheet," which you should have. I mean, come on, they're trying to memorize the rap. I mean, God. I but he won. Be- yeah. Because uh, unfortunately, DMC's was a little, and I love Daryl. He's mm-hmm. a great guy, but um, his was more generic, and Ming was focused. Right. So it's interesting when I look at some of the celebrities that came through the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, the one that stands out now, because all of a sudden, Ralph Macchio is hotter than ever. Of course. Uh, but looking back on that, I mean, obviously, you couldn't have seen Cobra Kai coming when it came, but no. But obviously, looking at it now, I mean, when you look back on some of the celebrities, is that one kind of you sit there and say man, that was kind of cool now because now that he's so hot, or is it one of those, you know, that's, it was cool, but it wasn't, like, huge. If you can... Uh, no, I... He, yeah. Karate Kid was always big with me. Right. I was always a huge fan of Karate Kid, and as time went by, and he, <laughs> I brought this up with him, um, Daniel was kind of the dick. Yeah, and, and it's now being portrayed. Yeah. And I think that's the brilliance of Cobra Kai. Yeah, because Johnny... Johnny Wall, he was a dick. Mm-hmm. We're finding out there's, you know, more levels to him than we ever met. Yes, yeah. and he was he was the new kid in town who who had to, you know, he tried to bust balls. He's from Jersey. Yeah, 
and he tried to bust balls, and uh, it didn't fly out in California back in the 80s, from what I understand. <laughs> um, but he ended up getting the girl. Right. Um, but I, I sort of brought that. He's like, I am so tired of hearing that. I'm like... <laughs> How can you be tired of hearing that? <laughs> I just told it to you. Exactly. <laughs> I got two more random shots. Sure. Um, um, CJ, can I have photo number three, please? And this is one. You were at a uh, minor league hockey game. Was this uh, the Toledo Walleye? Yes. Yeah. Yes, it was. And you did you get you actually got to drop the puck at, at the game? I did. Yeah. Was that one of the when you look at some of the moments because of being on Comic Book Band and doing the was that one of the highlights? I mean, does something kind of stand out more than that? Like dropping. That would, a... Yeah, I would think that's still kind of cool standing in front of like six thousand people in Toledo and kind of. It was going, pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, we we all got to drop a puck, right, Ming? Yeah. 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 He dropped the puck. <laughs> he so got dropped the puck. Um, it was really cool. But is it like the coolest thing? Yeah. No. What, what stands out? What stands out? On um, doing a uh, being alive at the Gramercy with Kevin Smith. Most of them have yeah. you know a lot of things to do with Kevin. Mm. Oddly enough. Yeah, what a shock! I know. And um, being at Caroline's mm -hmm. to a uh, to a sold out crowd. Uh, we sold out Caroline's. That was really big. With, and, and again, you're not comedians, so no. to, to sell out Caroline's is a huge deal. Yeah, for you know a schlub who you know worked at a comic book store. <laughs> so for Christ's sakes, you know, <laughs> I couldn't do that by myself. But Kevin Smith, absolutely. Thank you, Kevin. Yes, Ke absolutely. Thank you, Kevin. I got one more random shot, and I was doing some investigating. At one point, did you want to be a chef? At one point, I was a chef. You were a chef. Yes. Okay. So So this is something that, as I'm a fan of. If Chopped were to come to you and say, okay, we're going to put you, let's say Jeremy London, who's suddenly gotten into cooking. Gotcha. Uh, we'll put um, another Jersey-ish guy, Zach Braff, who okay. I know is into cooking, and a guy who won Celebrity Chopped and has a tie to Jersey, Michael Imperioli. You win? Do I win? Do you win or you, you're you in? I figure you're definitely Oh, am I in? in? Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm in. Do you think you can win? Oh, absolutely. Oh. I think I could. Okay. The, the only person, the only celebrity cook out there that I would worry about is John Favreau. See, and I have not seen John cook. You should it's watch the Chef Show. I have to. Oh my God! It's See, that's the thing. I saw his movie, <clears throat> which I know I know was a big influence mm -hmm. because of his passion for food. Chef was great. A great movie. Yeah. Very underrated movie, by the very, way. Very, yeah. very underrated. So if you get a chance and you can find this, it's got a great plot, it, but it also ties into John's passion for food, and I just haven't seen any of his cooking work yet. But if you ever get a chance, watch The Chef Show. It's on Netflix. Okay. And it's, he's with um, his guy, who um, is Roy, uh, Roy Choi. I think his name is mm -hmm. Roy Choi. Um, he was his technical uh, supervisor for Chef. Right. He was the the, the Kogi truck. Oh, yeah, I remember yeah. that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, they brought it on to Iron Man. That's what spurred Chef. That's because that I did not know. Yeah, because he heard uh, Roy's story about everything that went on. You know his his battles. You know yeah. to to get this you know thing going. And there's there's like turf wars for mm -hmm. um, you know uh, the 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 food trucks. Right. So as they're, they're jockeying for positions at you know four a.m. Mm -hmm. You know to get there at eight. So it's it's nuts in LA. It's it's crazy around here. You can't get one in Red Bank. It's, it's just <laughs> horrible, and I think it's it's a shame. It is. It's definitely a shame. I'm surprised you haven't done anything like on any of your podcasts. Or, I mean, maybe I've missed it. Maybe you have. But when you've kind of flexed your cooking muscles, I've done a couple of videos for we we uh, uh, we sponsor we were sponsored by Blue Apron for mm -hmm. I sell comics and. Um, they sent me a bunch of packages, so I, I cooked on, you know. There we go. I, I did a little video mm -hmm. and showed them how easy it was, <laughs> put it up, and, uh, yeah, I, that didn't make them go with us for another six months, Unfortunately, those bastards. Unfortunately, that sucks. I know. <laughs> See, you, 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 and by the way, I mean, if you ever thought about doing a podcast, The Shared Universe Now, based at 157 Broad Street in Red Bank, uh, so if you are in Jersey anywhere... Or anywhere across the globe. I mean, uh, Ming and Mike can do anything uh, remotely or locally. So hit them up and, and hit the Shared Universe uh, website. Because if you've ever thought about doing a podcast, 
it, this is the time to do it. Three blocks mm-hmm. from the Secret Stash. So come to the Secret Stash. There you go. Come have Ming engineer your podcast. Absolutely. That's the one thing. I, Ming has engineered a lot of my podcasts. I appreciate all the work because, I mean, him, CJ, Christian Cordes, they, they tolerate me is the best way of putting it because, of, you know, I'm like, going, okay, I want this photo here. I want this here. I want well, he's pulling them up pretty and well. He's doing very well, as a matter of fact. I appreciate it. Um, <laughs> we we get the, the best engineers. They know how to count. They <laughs> Uh, real quick, point blank, you can find through a shared universe. And they usually you're going once a week, so be looking for that. Go on the shared universe uh, website, find out more about that. Comic book men, obviously a big part of your life. Uh, I'm glad we got to reminisce a little bit. Yeah, me too. Thank you. you. Absolutely. Thank you so much, man. Oh, my pleasure. I appreciate it. My pleasure. That's a wrap for the A game this week. I'm Rob Akinpour. First one of 2022. Hopefully we'll have a lot more coming up in the next few weeks. Until the next time we meet, enjoy the rest of your night and the weekend ahead. Take care.